What's up YouTube, KidMoto22 here, and today I want to talk to you guys about the five best mods you can do for your bike before you do your exhaust. So let's get to this video right now. Welcome back YouTube, KidMoto22 here, and today, like I said in the intro, I want to talk to you guys about the five best mods you can do to your bike before you do anything with your exhaust. So <clears throat> one of the things that I have learned and figured out over my times of traveling and spending a lot of time on the road on my bike is that I probably did the mods on my bike probably out of order. And, and I've learned that there's probably a certain set of mods you should do to your bike first before you start doing stuff to your exhaust because you know like everybody else we all want that you know really nice harley sound so the first mod i think you should do to your bike is your lighting um there's a bunch of companies out there that do lighting um, some that i really like are Ciro and custom dynamics um, those of us that are part of the five degree bikers podcast we use um, they use a lot of uh, custom dynamics and I actually have zero on my bike so I can vouch for those two companies for sure but the reason why lighting is important is that Harley is still putting out a lot of motorcycles that don't have LEDs all the way around and LED lights on your bike are really important for visibility. So really lighting is a safety issue. I mean, from the front light to get you better visibility when you're riding at night to your front signals, um, you can get a lot of the companies like Ciro, Custom Dynamics, um, they have, uh, they make lights that you can put in your, um, your front blinkers that have like a run and blink lights so that they'll be white when they're running and then amber when you have your turn signals on and just uh, adds a lot of light to the front of your bike. Also adding those, um, the lighting to the back of your bike. Companies like Ciro and Custom Dynamics also have lighting modules you can buy to make your back lights blink and do patterns and do all kinds of other things. So that grabs that driver's attention that's behind you when you brake and when you're stopping. So all important things for safety. And again, um, just gives you uh, better visibility and better, you know, kind of driving at night. So the second thing is a comfort thing. And one of the things that can be very expensive, but um, if you are uh, savvy and you're ready to kind of take on the challenge um, of doing the mod yourself, that is your bars. Um, bars are essential to customizing your bike to make it fit you. I am definitely one of those riders that like my, my hands more forward. And a lot of the Harley bikes, your hands are turned out this way, which is not a comfortable position for me. I like a much more forward position on mine. I like also like a little bit narrower bars rather than having my hands be really far out. I like my hands to be a little bit um, more narrow and it gives me a little bit more control I feel like of my bike and especially if you really get into the twisties if your hands are up too high or they're really far apart and you're trying to get into a twisty you're going to run out of real estate with your arms to be able to reach those bars so um, for a comfort level for me especially with the way I like to ride which is long distance riding um, having bars that are at the right height is imperative also when your bars are at the right height you're not going to be bent over you're going to be sitting much more upright and straighter which is just a more comfortable riding position for long term so bars would be the second thing that I would say the third thing definitely definitely is a seat so for most people Harley stock seats just are not comfortable um, we've said it before on the five dirty bikers podcast I've said it on other um, videos of mine that must be the worst job ever at Harley Davidson is the guys that make the seats right because they know those suckers are gonna get taken off and thrown away the stock Harley seats just aren't great they have a really flexible seat pan which tends to break down over time a lot a lot faster and um, those are just really not great for putting a lot of miles on your bike and also the um, the pillion portion of the seats just are not comfortable for two up riding so Harley does make some um, 
you know, I, I don't I don't know if I'd call them aftermarket seats, but OEM seats that aren't the stock seats that aren't too bad. I actually have one that I use for two up on my bike that, you know, has been very comfortable for my two up passengers when I ride with my wife and my daughters. And so I have a seat like that. I've also tried um, some other brands. Um, when I had my Sportster, I used Mustang. I know Saddleman's a very um, popular brand for seats. So I think that, um, you know, go with a reputable company, go with something that has a little bit firmer seat pan. And if you can, find a dealer near you that has demo seats. Demo seats are definitely the way to go. Usually what they'll do is they'll let you throw a demo seat on your bike, take it for a test ride. It gives you some idea of whether or not that seat's gonna be the right seat for you. Also, they make seats for shorter riders or taller riders that are gonna move you closer to your bars or further back, which will also affect your comfort level um, with your bars and your foot controls. So those are all things to consider, but seat is definitely the third thing that you should be thinking about in terms of a mod before you do your exhaust. The fourth thing I think you should think about, and um, no matter the kind of style of riding you do, I truly believe that you should think of some type of wind protection. Now there are a lot of riders out there that are gonna say, hey, I wanted to, I bought a motorcycle so I could be in the wind. I understand that and I'm not uh, begrudging anybody for wanting to be in the wind. But if you are gonna put a lot of miles on your bike or you're affected by the wind fatigue, wind protection is definitely a must. Um, I'm a big fan of Memphis Shades. Memphis Shades has fairings and windshields and all kinds of options and they are an absolutely fantastic company to work with. Um, they also make hand guards, but they make a lot of, of wind protection options. Um, there's also an, a lot of other options for people that have um, just a fairing already on their bike, but the windshield maybe just isn't the right height, or some companies that like flare windshields like Clockworks. So do your homework and definitely figure out a solution for wind protection that is going to be the right thing for you. You know, you really, you want that wind to, do you, you want the wind to get just up over your helmet. Um, if you can't do that, you're gonna want it to hit your face and not the top of your helmet so you're not getting bobblehead. Um, especially if you wear a full face helmet, hitting your face isn't really that big of a deal. But this way it keeps that wind off of your upper body. This can aid in keeping you warmer and also helps a lot with wind fatigue. The other thing that I would say is if you have a touring style motorcycle. I have a Road King Special and I opted for hard lowers on the bottom. I ran soft lowers for almost two seasons and while they were great and offered a ton of wind protection, um, I found myself aesthetically pretty much hating the way that they look. Now a lot of people are like, well just take them off if you don't like them. Well, I had a tendency to leave them on all the time because I liked the wind protection that they offered me on long distance rides. They kept all of that wind from hitting my lower legs and that is also a factor in wind fatigue is that lower body um, wind protection. And so I did opt for some Advan Black Hard Lowers that I put on my bike that are color matched for my bike and that took basically all of that wind off my lower leg. Um, it also keeps my feet warmer in the colder time, colder months when I ride because I'm not getting that wind that's either blowing up my pant leg or right into, the, into my boot. Now, the side note to that is if you live in a warmer weather environment, um, having these hard lowers on is going to raise the temperature of your bike and it is going to feel much warmer because it keeps that heat in and you're not getting the wind blowing away from you. And so you might need to opt for some of those uh, louvers that go down by your seat that keep some of that heat off of the inside of your legs. Um, you also, with most of the hard lowers that I've seen, there's vents and I like to open up the vents so I aim them kind of at my motor. So when the wind comes in through those vents, it blows right on the motor and blows that heat out, um, kind of exhausts that heat out behind me as I'm going down the highway. So I use that definitely when it's, uh, when it's much warmer, I keep those vents open. But, but wind protection is definitely something that you need to consider um, as, a, as a mod prior to doing exhaust. And the last thing that I would say is foot controls. Now, foot controls, for some people, they're gonna say, oh, that's just an aesthetic thing. You don't need to do anything with that. And I put foot controls in kind of the same um, area that I put hand controls. I would usually in include hand controls with your bars. If you're gonna replace your bars, you should go ahead and, and adjust your hand controls, whether you need to put new levers on 
um, adjusting the pitch of your hand controls so that they are right at, at their right comfort level. Um, foot controls I put in the same category. So if number five is foot controls. And the reason why I say this is that you have some um, adjustment in where your brick where your brake is at, where your clutch is at, you can, um, you know, where your shifter's at, you can adjust those a little bit to get them where you want. There's also a variety of aftermarket options to make those arms longer and or shorter, and you can change the pitch of those also. This is very important because this is, um, it's muscle memory when you're riding your motorcycle. So knowing where your brake is at and where your shifter is at, you're not looking down when you do those things. And so it's all muscle memory. So having them in a good position where you want them to be is very important. And then whether or not you have a motorcycle with pegs or footboards, or say you have pegs and you want footboards, having that, um, you know, you know, adjusting those to your liking. So if you have pegs and you want footboards, or if you have footboards and you want pegs, say you have forward controls, you want mid controls, all of these things aid in the comfort level of your motorcycle and are going to make your ride better. So foot controls is kind of a, a very inclusive thing. The other thing is a number of years ago, um, I believe it was two years ago, Harley took the, um, the back shifter, so the heel toe shifter portion of their baggers, that heel shifter portion was removed. And some people really enjoy those. I've always removed it um, because I like the additional room it allows me on my footboard, but some people put those back on because they like that heel shifter on there. So that's another thing that you can kind of include in your foot controls. So that's what I have for you guys today. Um, the five mods that I think you should do before you do your exhaust. Lighting, number one. Bars, number two. Seat, number three. Wind protection, number four. And, and of course, foot controls as number five. So those are the five things that I have. I hope you guys like this video. If you do, give me a thumbs up. I'll put a link to another video of mine up over here or over here. And I'll put a subscribe button over here, over here too. And again, always remember, subscriptions are free. Thank you guys for watching. This is Kid Moto. I'm out.